welcome to geography class now we are going to discuss about the distribution of rainfall throughout the india now these are the mountains which play a major role for the distribution of rainfall throughout the india so these are himalayas these are garo khasi and jaintia this is aravalli range this one is pindia range this one is satpura these are the western ghats and these are the eastern ghats now we have to remember there are two branches which bring the rainfall for india why are there two branches so here you see when the wind comes from the southern india because of the triangular shape it is divided into two parts one is arabian sea branch and the second one is the bay of bengal branch now we are going to discuss about the rainfall through arabian sea branch at first we will observe the animation very carefully here you can see the winds are coming from the arabian sea but western currents are creating a barrier that's why the rain bearing winds are unable to cross the barrier and the western coastal plain is getting the high amount of rainfall after that you can observe that another branch from the arabian sea they are entering to the india through the gaps right here the gaps are situated in between one is in between aravalli and vindhya and the another is in between vindhya and satpura first one will bring the rainfall over the malwa plateau and the another one will bring the rainfall over the narmada rift valley zone otherwise you can see there the presence of three gaps there the thalghat gap bhorghat gap and the palghat gap through the gaps the wind will enter to the central portion of southern india right but the amount will be very little that's why the central portion of southern india that is the maharashtra region central maharashtra region and the karnataka plateau will not get the enough amount of rainfall and they will remain dry throughout the year now we are going to discuss about the rainfall through bay of bengal branch here you can observe eastern ghats are not continuous range that's why the rain bearing wind easily enters to india and they will bring the rainfall over the adjoining places of eastern ghats right now here you will see the other branches of bay of bengal they will move northwards and they will bring the rainfall over the west bengal bihar jharkhand even up delhi and few portion of himachal pradesh and other branches of bay of bengal they will directly move northwards and they will bring the rainfall over the assam and the other northeastern states right here you have to remember garo khasi jaintia and the other purbanchal ranges they are very closely located that's why there will be the creation of funneling effect and because of the funneling effect only a smaller portion or the smaller place will get the maximum amount of rainfall that's why cherapunji mosindram they get maximum amount of rainfall through the bay of bengal branch and another thing you have to remember the rainfall through the bay of bengal branch is very important for the farmers throughout the year they just wait for the rainfall through the bay of bengal branch so here we can say the northern plains are greener because of the bay of bengal branch now we can observe that major portions of india are getting the rainfall through the bay of bengal branch only the western coastal plain narmada rift valley malwa plateau and few portion of himachal pradesh are getting the rainfall through the arabian sea branch otherwise you can see the punjab few portion of himachal pradesh uttarakhand up bihar west bengal jharkhand assam and all north eastern states even the adjoining places of eastern ghats are getting the rainfall through the bay of bengal branch so we can see bay of bengal branch plays an important role for indian economy now we are going to discuss the distribution of rainfall through isohydes isohydes join the places having same amount of 
rainfall. Here you can observe in the extreme northwestern portion of India, they are receiving rainfall approx 20 cm. After that in the northwestern portion, we can see the rainfall amount is 60 cm. Even in the central portion of Maharashtra and Karnataka, the rainfall amount is 60 cm. After that in the central portion of India, the amount of rainfall is 100 cm. Even you can see in the Ladakh region, the rainfall amount is 60 cm. But in the western coastal plain, the amount of rainfall is 200 cm. And in the northeastern states, the amount of rainfall is 200 cm. Now, if you see the zoning, we will get another clear idea. Right? So, the Ladakh region, northwestern portion of India, and the leeward side of Western Ghat, which is central Maharashtra and Karnataka region, they are receiving rainfall less than 50 cm. After that, if you see the central portion of India, they are receiving rainfall from 50 cm to 100 cm. And the northeastern states and the windward side of western cut they are receiving rainfall more than 200 cm and the major portion of india that is punjab uttarakhand few portion of himachal pradesh up bihar jharkhand west bengal few portion of madhya pradesh orissa then andhra pradesh few portion of Tamil Nadu they are receiving rainfall 100 to 200 cm even you can see the few portion of Maharashtra and Karnataka they are also receiving 100 to 200 cm so we can say that major portion of India are receiving the rainfall 100 to 200 cm right now we are going to discuss the diversity in Indian climate here you can see during winter time the temperature of Kashmir is minus 45 degrees centigrade but if you come to the southern portion in Kochi and Chennai the winter temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. Again if you see the duodenal range of temperature is also variable from place to place. Here if you see the in Kerala the duodenal range of temperature is only 8 degrees centigrade but in third desert, the duodenal range of temperature is 30 degrees centigrade. I hope you already know what is duodenal range of temperature. But for a quick recap, I am saying the duodenal range of temperature means the difference between the day temperature and night temperature. Suppose in Kerala, the day temperature is 28 degrees centigrade, but the night temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. So the duodenal range of temperature will be 8 degrees centigrade. Even in Rajasthan, if the day temperature is 55 degrees centigrade, maybe the night temperature is only 25 degrees centigrade. So the duodenal range of temperature will be 30 degrees centigrade. Right? Now we'll see the rainfall. Here you can see Chirapunji and Moss syndrome. They are receiving more than 1000 cm rainfall in uh, monsoon season. But if you come to the Jaisalmer, uh, Jaisalmer is receiving only 9 cm rainfall during monsoon time. Here you have to remember two things. Number one, the temperature will always decrease from south to north. And number two, the rainfall will decrease from east to west. Right? Here you see the place uh, that is Shuru in Rajasthan that records 50.8 degrees centigrade in June. But if you come to the Kashmir, the temperature ranges from 11 degrees centigrade to 25 degrees centigrade during summer. After that, the snowfall over the Himalayas reduces the temperature of the surrounding region. But in other cases, the precipitation type is only rainfall right now if you come to the next portion uh, most of the parts of india receives rainfall during june to september but tamil nadu coast that is the karumandal coast remains dry during this monsoon months so tamil nadu receives rainfall only during winter so here you can see monsoon is a very very interesting phenomenon right so we observe different kinds of phenomenon within a country i hope this video is informative for you. So, stay happy, stay safe. I am going to meet you very soon. 
बाय